Welcome back to Take 5. Here's a question for you. How well do you know the products you use? From skincare to household items, environmental toxins are everywhere. And we're not trying to scare you, but they do impact our health. Dr. Laura Shaheen is a fertility specialist with Pacific Northwest Fertility. She's also the author of Not Broken, An Approachable Guide to Miscarriage and Recurrent Pregnancy Loss. So you've studied this extensively. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to Thank say the you. least. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And Thank we, you. you and I have talked about this before about how these things impact fertility, but what do we mean when we're talking about environmental toxins? Sure. In general, it's chemicals or things that are man-made that can be found in our environment or we're exposed to, something that's not natural but impacts our health and usually in a negative way. Okay, so BPA and phthalates with yes. a silent P, you might say. <laughs> yeah. That's a tricky one. Where, what are they and what are they in? Sure. So BPA is... Um, it's a product that was actually made in the late 1800s and used as a synthetic estrogen. So it was used as an estrogen to treat female problems in the early 1900s. And then um, kind of put on the shelf and rediscovered in the 1950s as a great epoxy resin to make plastics more flexible and pliable. And phthalates are kind of the same thing, developed in the turn of the century and really are used in a lot of plastic products and products that we use to, especially beauty products, increase the shelf life of the beauty products. And what's the harm? What, what is it? What have we found that they do? Sure. Both of these and a lot of the chemicals that we are exposed to are called endocrine disruptors. So they um, attach to our uh, receptors and our hormones and kind of act like estrogens and testosterones and other hormones. And they really disrupt some of the natural um, actions in our body. So what are some things that you're finding because you work in fertility, full mm -hmm. disclosure, you're my doctor, you're the reason <laughs> I have a daughter, I always want to mention that. Um, what what does that actually mean? Like what kinds sure. of fertility issues? Sure. Um, there are so many different studies on animal levels and human levels. Um, BPA levels are higher in women with um, endometriosis, PCOS, miscarriage, um, high levels of phthalates associated with endometriosis, um, poor egg quality, poor sperm quality, um, poor outcomes in IVF treatments. Um, you can kind of pick it apart and find it in all different levels of fertility. But other aspects of health too, it's not just fertility. Yeah, what are some of the other things? Sure, um, obesity. People who are obese have a higher level of BPAs in their system. Um, it's associated with diabetes, which is a huge endocrine disorder. Um, cardiovascular health. Um, it's really been implicated in a lot of different health. Aspects. I thought what was interesting when we were talking about this is the difference in regulations here in the United States versus in Europe. How many chemicals are banned <laughs> from beauty products in Europe? 1,300. And how many here in the U.S.? Um, 11. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> There's something um, wrong there. What's going on? It's different. So the last time there was a law that was passed that limited limit a chemical in a beauty product was 1938. And it's just a very different philosophy. Um, in general, we sort of take it on big business and government to protect us, and mm -hmm. we're sort of um, uh, very trusting. And I think that the feeling is we want, kind of want to step back a little bit and not interfere too much in big business, that they're going to take care of us and make sure we're healthy. So what can we do if big business isn't doing it for us? Um, just learn and educate yourself. And let me tell you, the first time that I really opened my eyes to this when I was researching for my writing and my books, I really got overwhelmed. It um, feels overwhelming. Yeah, so I can read the scientific studies and I can sort of see it on a lot of different levels and it is very overwhelming. But you just have to take a deep breath and just take it one product at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of women are really open to it when they're looking for safe products for their children. But it just impacts us on so many different levels. You can't just start then. And just think about it, you know, when you run out of your shampoo, just look at what you have. There's a bunch of wonderful resources, um, environmental working group, ewg.org. Um, there's some apps. Think Dirty is this great app on your smartphone. You can walk into the drugstore and scan the barcode and it'll tell you um, if the product is you know, safe or how many toxins are in it. And so when you run out of something or you're buying your you know, stocking stuffers, just think about it one product at a time. One product at a time. I know it's a lot to unpack, so we have a keyword, toxins. If you text that, we will send you back a link. There's a lot being done in Washington State, so I want to make sure that you can read about that. But just a drop in the bucket towards our health. <laughs> Dr. Shane, thing. thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And again, her book is called Not Broken. You can find it on Amazon, and we have a link um, up on our website. For